All right, everyone. Uh, I am today joined with a living legend. You guys know that I'm known from the loser to legend, and I want to share with you this incredible human being who, I'm going to tell you a story. You guys know my edification is a little bit different than the masses, the majorities of uh, edification, as well as being a multiple New, New York Times bestselling author, started and being involved in 13 different companies, having resulted in 13, uh, sorry, over a billion dollars in sales. Recently launched a knowledge broker blueprint with Mr. Tony Robbins, or do you call him Lord Tony Robbins? I haven't really established, I think he's, he's lording up there, having over 200,000 people on a live launch at one time. Um, I want to tell you a story. So I went to Nashville for the first time in 2018 to an event that Russell Brunson did in uh, court. It was a ClickFunnels event, Funnel Hacking Live. And I was looking through the brochure and I was going through and I was like, I don't really know any of these. I don't really know any of these speakers. Being from the UK, you know, American speakers, it's like, oh, you know, I don't know too many of the stories. Anyway, Dean gets introduced onto the stage and at my notepad was full. Like, lit I think I transcribed Dean's presentation. It wasn't a note taken, it was a transcription of the, uh, of the event. I've been around personal development since I was in the womb. My first ever presentation my mom and dad went to in the network marketing industry, I was in the room, in the womb. And ever since then, I've been a student of the industry just like this guy has right now. And I'm super excited to bring to you Mr. Dean Graciosi. Dean, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for that uh, beautiful introduction. Everybody, thanks for uh, thanks for listening. I know you got lots of options, so if you're going to spend time with us today, we're gonna we're gonna rock the house and deliver you some great capabilities. So I thanks for choosing it. us. I love it, you know, and I love to get I love to get help the audience get to know you a little bit more with some real quick fire questions. Uh, Let's real do it. simple. Answer them as fast as you can. Right? Pizza or pasta? What's that? Pizza or pasta? Oh, oh, that's a tough one. I'm Italian. I like them both. I'd have to say pasta. I <laughs> love it, love it. Which type? If you were to have one type uh, of pasta? I would say rigatoni. Ooh, that's rare. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd okay. say rigatoni. All right, there's a rare breed. Right. Read or listen when it comes to personal development? Uh, listen, for sure. Love it, love it. Beach or city? Say it again. Beach or city? Uh, beach. Ooh, sneakers or flip-flops? Definitely sneakers. <laughs> Oh, man. I love it. <laughs> uh, and what's the favorite movie? What's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, it used to be for a long time. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life, a movie right before Christmas. I love that. I love that. It's an old music, uh, old movie uh, made in the 20s. Uh, like, the, the old ones are the best ones, right? The old ones are the best ones. So, Dean, for me, one of, one of the favorite things about you, I, I've seen I've seen a lot of the clips, and guys, you can literally Google Dean. He, he's that well-known that he comes up, he floods Google, floods YouTube, floods everything that you go on. So go check him out. Go follow him on all the different platforms. But Dean, the thing that made me fall in love with you and what you teach was, was how you kind of broke down, like, the perfect video um, of, like, how... Because obviously my audience, they... They use a lot of uh, Facebook Lives, Instagram Stories, yep. to sell their products, promote their services, promote their businesses. If you, were, if you were in the network marketing space and you were to do videos to get people to come into your world, what would you do? Like, what would be the breakdown of the video that you, that you would do? All right, cool. So first I'd start with this. The, the world, doesn't matter where you live in the world right now, the world has shifted. People have uncertainty at a higher level than, than in my 51 years of being on this earth. So take that into consideration and I would say, before I teach you some things that I think will really exponentially improve your ability to do video and get people to take action, I'm gonna tell you to double down on how much you care about people. Double down on making sure your product is the thing that's aligned with you that you know can serve others. If you know you're selling something that's okay but not that great, freaking go sell something else or work to help it be improved. Because when people always ask me, when did your sale, how did you get so good at sales? It just every year I fall more in love with what I do. What Tony Robbins and I created, I'm so in love with that. When I write my books, I'm in love with them, meaning I know that if people will read them, just like Fraser, when people listen to you, you know you can help them go faster and quicker in the business they want. When you fall in love with that, you automatically get better at sales, right? Think about if you have your favorite pasta at Italian restaurant, 
compared to just telling somebody to go get some food at a local you know diner just to eat one is like yeah you can grab some food or if your favorite restaurant has your favorite pasta you're like oh my god the pasta is a little al dente the red sauce is perfect the family's from Italy the music it sounds great they have flowers on the table and the meatballs like you tell it in a different way when you know you're serving someone remember selling is service when it's done right when you know if someone says yes they work with you they align with you they become part of your team or they buy your product if you know for an absolute fact that that improves their life you will automatically get better on video at sales the incongruency is where most people fall flat they're selling something they don't really believe in it's gonna pay the check it'll pay the it'll pay the bills and then you wonder why you're not good at sales so number one before I share the model is love what you do so much that you feel bad if people don't say yes like and when you have that, then anything you do is not like, it doesn't feel like, uh, you know, some people think of sales are bad. I think of sales as the, the oxygen for every good business and the oxygen for changing someone's life. And when you feel that way, then all of a sudden sales get easier. Now, now that was kind of high level. How do we get more tactical? So the first thing I'll share with you before I tell you this like three-step model that I use for a video is you need to enter the conversation already going on in the mind of the person you want to approach, which you call your prospect, right? What are conversations they're having right now? I would guarantee my life that they're not having the same conversations today that they were just eight months ago, right? COVID shifts in the world. If they're in America with crazy elections going on and race, race uh, uh, confrontation and, and trying to fix that, like the, the, people are all over. and. We need, to, we need to have that empathy, that caring, and we need to open our ears to understand where they are right now. People will buy from you when they feel understood, not when they understand you. So those two things I just said have been the foundation of, of when I go on camera is enter a conversation they're already having. Secondly, let them feel understood. How do you do that? Read their comments, have empathy, and actually deliver something good. So that's step two. Step three is something I taught that you probably saw, saw me share, Fraser, it's called hook story close. And that really, that wasn't something I came up with and then I did videos. It's something I looked backwards, at, back of doing over 20 years of successful videos and I said, what do they have in common? Like why did that video get 20 million views on Facebook and, and why did that infomercial back in the 90s, why did that work? And I started analyzing all my videos and I realized they had this cadence. They had something that stopped people to go, oh, I better listen. Then they had a story that was compelling that made them stay. And then I had a call to action or a close or an offer that compelled them to say yes. And what I see, and I'll, sh I'll break this down a little bit, what I see is so many people are really good at the story, Frazier, but they miss the hook. So. If you have a video that you think you poured your heart out, that it should be good, but you're not getting the results you want, my gut is it's got a great story, but it doesn't have the hook that gets people to say, I'm listening to this whole thing. So let me give you an example. How do you find a hook? Go back to the first two things I said. Enter conversations they're already having. The world has shifted. What's on their mind? What are they worried about? Right? What do they need? What do they desire? What are they afraid of? What are their goals? What are they running away from? What are they running towards? It's easy, this is your world, you live in it. Live inside their mind and allow them to feel understood. So a hook to me, it sounds kind of like a cheesy thing, but a hook just means there's a sea of red shirts. How do you become the only person with a black shirt and they go, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to this guy, I'm gonna listen to this girl, right? How do you get them to stop? The reason I got good at this is because I used to, I had infomercials for 20 years and infomercials is a TV ad. There's no targeting ad. You're not going after your ideal client. You're just putting it on TV and you hope someone walks by, stops, and watches your show. Not an easy task. And compared to what you guys have access to, you should be praying and grateful to God every single day that we have this thing called social media that if you want to find moms that like peanut butter and jelly who do yoga at night and want to be in network marketing, you can find 1.2 million of them right now, right? Like, no complaints. When Tony Robbins and I started, it was like smoke signals and carrier pigeons, right? So, my whole point is this. Um, 
a hook is just the thing that makes people watch your video, right? Don't overthink it. And that is usually something that really feeds into what's going on in their life right now. Not what you think they need, what they feel they want. I'm gonna give you a quick example, and I'll make this quick so it really hopefully anchors in. I got the chance to do an infomercial here in the States. Uh, there's a gentleman named Larry King. He had a show for almost 60 years. He's interviewed every president, every famous person. He was our most famous uh, interviewer uh, in history. I had the chance to do an interview slash infomercial with him. And I obsessed on some of his best shows. And it was to sell my book, uh, Millionaire Success Habits. And I obsessed on his best shows. And my hook was going to be this opening sentence. And again, the hook is like the first two sentences that come out of your mouth. I don't want to overcomplicate this. What are the few first two sentences you say? And is it compelling enough where people don't swipe past you? That's Just think about it that way, right? So long story short, I modeled some of his opens that he had with Prince and Lady Gaga and President Clinton and President Obama. And it was more like this. So Larry King comes on and says, tonight, I want you to really think about this. This is the hook. Tonight on Larry King, I'm going to be here. I'm, I'm interviewing Dean Graziosi. He's a multiple New York Times bestseller, a multimillionaire. And today we're going to talk about his new book, Millionaire Success Habits. That was really similar, uh, um, Frazier, to so many other interviews that he did. And I just thought, let me do what they're doing. So we put the show out, had a great story, which I'll get to in a minute, had a great offer for my book. The book was free if they just paid shipping and handling, and it didn't work. And we tried another version. It didn't work. And I, and I looked at it. I was like, God, Larry King is so popular. This is such a good book. But it wasn't working. And then it hit me in one moment. I said, wow, the thing that I know, the hook, story, close, I was missing the hook. That opening sentence wasn't about them. It wasn't about living inside their mind. It wasn't about what they need. I wasn't finishing their conversation. It was all about Dean. Dean's this, Dean's that. They don't give a shit about Dean. Excuse my language, right? And when I recognize that, here's what I want to share with you. I didn't change anything about the show. I didn't change the call to action. I didn't change the cover of the book. I didn't change the pages of the book. I didn't change the length of the pages of the book. I didn't change the testimonials that were in the show. I changed the first two sentences and the show went on to be a major hit. And I changed those first two sentences from tonight, I'm on Larry King with Dean Graziosi. He's this, that, and the other thing and he's got a new book. I simply change it to this. Larry King comes on, the first thing, like just picture the camera comes on, there's Larry King, and he's sitting there like this with a pen in his hand, and Larry King says, have you ever in your adult life looked in the mirror and thought to yourself, wow, I thought I'd be further ahead by now. Ugh, if you have, you're not alone. And my guest tonight, Dean Graziosi, is gonna show you the one thing, and that's it. Look at the difference. Did, did that affect you more than the first one? Of course it did, because I was talking to you I was, talk, I was entering conversations you have had. I guarantee you've looked in the mirror. You've thought about that. When I changed that hook, that showed it went on to be massively successful. So if you don't think the first two sentences are important, you're wrong. For me, it's the thing I obsess on the most. How do I get people like a scratch of a record to stop and go, I'm spending time with Frazier. I'm spending time with Dean. I'm spending time with the, the author of this video. Now, once you have that, then the story Here's some ingredients for the story. It's really simple. You've done this before. It's what's your epiphany? Why are you good at what you've done? How can you help them? How do you overcome their objections in advance? How do you tell them that how they can move away from pain or move towards pleasure? How do you have some social proof back baked in there? You've done this already. That's the story. You stop them and they go, okay, tell me about it. Then you tell them. You know, for me, when I did Millionaire Success Habits, my story was something like, which is true, when I was a kid, both my parents worked really hard to have nothing. And they had, and when I recognized in early ages, they had habits, but it was habits that didn't serve them. It didn't serve happiness. They were divorced and married nine times between them. They lost jobs, they didn't have money. So they had habits, they just weren't good habits. And then I studied successful people and they had different habits. And as I slowly adapted those habits into my life, my life shifted. And I went on to do this, that, the other thing. And I know what you're thinking, habits are hard. And so I overcame their objections. But basically my story was the truth. My parents had certain habits that kept them broke and sad. I shifted those habits and I was able to do way better in my life and even help my parents and retire both of them. So that was my story and it was a true story. 
And then the last part is your call to action. This is the part that you have to create a compelling offer and tell them exactly what they need to do and why they should do it. I've watched people have even a good hook and a great story, and then they go, well, and if you wanna follow me, go here. And if you wanna sign up with me, you can click the link. No, people need to be told what to do, how to do it, and in a compelling way. And here's, some th here's three things of a call to action. One, it's all gotta be benefit driven. So many people, including me, I've messed up my call to actions by giving you all the options, all the pieces. Like, hey, if you sign up with me, I'll train you. And in module two, I'll do this. And in module three, I'll do this. And in module four, you'll have this. In module five, you'll have this. If you were selling a course or if you're teaching people to do it. People don't care all you get. They want to know who they'll be after working with you or buying what you have. Right? So think about this in a call to action. If I was selling you a car and I wanted to, I know it's not an option now, but I wanted to sell you a car and I wanted to add on air condition. I could say, which we all mess up and do, I could say, hey, you have this car. Now let me tell you about this air condition you can get. Freon, it's this liquid that gets really cold. And inside the car, the Freon runs through, it's, it's got a pump, the pump is run by the engine, the pump takes the Freon and pushes it through feet, like 10 feet of coils and there's fins on that coil and the Freon going through the aluminum gets cold. And then there's a fan behind the fins, and when you hit this button, the fan goes on, and it blows air through the cold fins, and then cold air comes out these vents. Or you could simply say, if you buy this car, you can also get air conditioning. And what that means is when it's hot outside, it can be cold in your car. No one cares about the fins, or the fan, or the Freon, or how it was created. They wanna know when it's hot, I'm cold. Think about, Headlights, you could tell them all the air way that headlights are built or you could say when it's dark, you can see. So remember in your call to action, what is their experience gonna be? Who are they gonna become? What are the benefits? What are the outcomes for them to take the action you want them to take? That's the first thing. The second thing, most people when they get to a call to action, especially when they're new, they get a little insecure. They feel bad about selling, so they back up a little bit, or their voice change, or they, mm, yeah, uh, you're gonna, like, if you are not confident about what you're asking, do you think they're gonna be confident in giving you a check, or signing up, or working with you, or being in your downline? That's when your energy and enthusiasm has to go up. That goes back to my original statement to you when I said, Love what you do so much that you feel bad because if you love what you do so much, when you get to the sale part, your energy will go up, your enthusiasm will go up, just like when you're telling your friend to go have the Italian you know, rigatoni and pasta and meatballs because you love it so much. You got to love what you do that much. If you don't love it, find a way to love it or you'll be apologizing for the sale. And in the history of the world, have you ever bought anything from somebody who feels like they're apologizing for you to ask to sign up or ask to be in their downline or ask to buy the product? No. So you must, must find that courage. And then third is tell them exactly what to do, right? Click the link, go to the page. When you go to the page, watch the video, get enrolled. I'll be with you at this date. So many times people will say, you get this, here's the benefits, and just click the link. People need to be told exactly what to do and then make whatever it is you're asking them to do easy, right? Our world is about the easy button. Right? How many times have you gone to a website and you bought something, even like a, a plane ticket? And, and Fraser, you could tell me this. Have you ever bought a, a plane ticket or something online? And then you go back two weeks later to buy it again, and they want you to fill out your credit card again. You're like, I I'm, I'm not doing this. You already have my stuff. I I'm not. Why do you think Amazon exploded with the one click, right? Once you give them their stuff, then all of a sudden you want, oh, let me add this and this and this and this, right? So remember, benefit driven. Don't apologize. Raise your enthusiasm and confidence. Love what you do. Tell them exactly what to do and then make it easy for them to do what you told them to do. It, it, I'm, I'm so grateful you shared this because a lot of you guys are listening, watching into this, you'll probably know of my pyramid ad. And for those of you who follow me for a long time, you'll definitely know it because I started in front of the Louvre in France, in Paris, and I go, oh, look, it looks like one of those pyramid things. I'm just kidding. And then I share a story in it at the end. And I, how did I do that video? You'll notice if you look at the date of the video, it was one week after Dean did his presentation at Funnel <laughs> Oh, that's cool, man. Uh, and that video went on to do two, three million views. We made an absolute killing from the ads on that. And, and it just became this viral video because 
it was so related to the audience of, well, I always get the objection of this current thing, so I want to hear what he's got to say. How can he help me? So the training and the video ended up being a training in itself as well. As well. So um, also with the call to action, I'm, I'm such a great believer in believing in everything you've got. My dad followed up with me 16 times. He said the exact same thing to me 16 times. I believe you call it marketing stamina. I believe if yeah. I from my note from my notes, it was a couple of years ago, so two and a half years ago, but I believe it was that. Um, and he, he followed up, he said the same thing. But before he said the story, he used to ask me a question that got me so curious. Hey, Fraze, that what you're doing on that construction site to make you happy, you excited about it? And I was like, no, not really. And then he went into pitch me 16 times until the timing was right. He didn't change the product, didn't change the service. And he, I said to him years after, I said, dad, that was like you asking the same woman at a bar Will you, let me <laughs> you would probably call the police after three, four, five times. Why did you keep telling me? Why did you keep telling me? He said, I was doing myself and you a disservice if I didn't keep telling you about it. And I believe that a lot of people try and change the product instead of just trying to change the message. So the one, one thing I one thing to look about you, I want to talk about something real quick, because both our time's limited, is you are a great believer in the underdog. And I, I share the story, I share a lot of the story, how I went from a loser to some people say legend, right? And we, we all have that kind of that, that story. Yep. In, in network marketing, a lot of people are the underdogs. You know, they haven't got the time, they haven't got the money, they've got the too much going on in their life. And that's why they join. What, what would be some of your quick tips on them really understanding what they've got and what the potential they have in their life in order for them to go from the, like, what is that underdog advantage? Yeah, that's a really great question. Uh, obviously, you know, I love it. I wrote the book, The Underdog Advantage, because here's, here's what you have to really understand. So many of us grow up, and I remember these feelings, and this is, doesn't make you bad, it doesn't, but we have these feelings that if someone would come help us, if someone would lend us the resources, if someone would believe in us, if someone would believe our dreams and aspirations could become real, or if someone could help us patent our invention, if someone, if someone, if someone, we have all these beliefs and it's not true. We, the fact of the matter is the only person you can rely on is you. There's no one coming to save you. There's no one coming to lend you money. There's no government official gonna be elected and fix everything and pay off your bills. And once you accept that, it is so freeing that we are in charge of our success or our failure. Because here's why, and I say that, you're probably thinking, well, maybe you had money or someone helped you. And, and everybody has their own story. I didn't, I didn't have any money. I lived in a trailer park as a kid. I didn't go to university or college. I didn't have money to start. But here's what I realize now more than ever at 51 years old, it has nothing to do with resources. It has to do with resourcefulness, right? Think about this. Think about those that hit lotto and win millions and millions of dollars. They have all the resources they need. Why do most of them go broke? because they had resources without resourcefulness. I have three children. I have a seven month old, a new baby, and I have a almost 12 and almost 14. And for me, if I could give them any gift, it's not just leaving them a whole bunch of money. I wanna leave them with the ability to be relentlessly resourceful because you could drop them off anywhere. You could start with nothing. They could take all your money away and you could bring it back. I mean, I forget the philosopher who said, um, even if it was a philosopher, it's just been around for a long time, is if you took all the money away from everybody in the world, within five years, those with the wealth would have it back because they're the resourceful ones, right? They're not waiting with their arms crossed for someone to fix it. And when you realize that when people tell you you can't, that it's actually a superpower if you know how to shift it. When you don't have the resources, the finances, the college education or the right education, that's actually your gift when you know how to shift it when you realize that being told no is actually the fuel to get you the yeses you want. All these pieces, when you realize as, a, as an underdog, you could turn, listen to this, you can turn no, you can turn disadvantage into your actual persuasion, right? But think about how many times people have said no to you or you don't have the money. That's when we can get more persuasive to be more passionate and be more enthusiastic. When people aren't an underdog, think about those that are born on third base. Right, I, I don't mean this disrespectful. I have a lot of friends that have had amazing childhoods and they're doing incredible in their life, but they have that underdog mindset of like, I am gonna go after the bigger companies. I'm gonna go after the guy that's got a bigger downline than me. I don't care if I have the resources. I don't care if I come to the wrong place. I'm gonna find a way no matter what. That person finds the way. And those that have that, yeah, like, I'm kinda good and we'll figure this out, don't make it. 
Like you need a hunger, you need a drive that pushes you past all the no's and all the obstacles. And that's why I love that underdog mindset, right? If you are an underdog, you need to learn how to shift it to be your superpower. And if you're not an underdog, you need to adopt an underdog mindset if you really want to pass the competition. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's, un, it's unbelievable. And I think when you truly understand that, it makes a big difference. And I've always believed people don't make statues of you based on the amount of money you make. They make statues of you based on the amount of significance that you change, or the amount of significance you bring to other people. And one thing I, I love about you and your story is you are going on a mission now to help the world with, with your with your girlfriend with, with your girlfriend Tony Robbins to help them understand and appreciate the personal growth and to get into into the world of you know making a difference going from the loser to the legend going from the underdog to the guy who's just winning everything um, and I believe everything is a shipping business it starts with a friendship we then build a relationship we see who wants to have the entrepreneurship to create the partnership with your mentorship you create leadership to one day win a championship right so guys here's what we need to do. There's two things. I know we should have one clear one, but there's two things. Dean has a killer podcast, like killer. So go onto the podcast app. What I want you to do is I want you to go onto the podcast app. I want you to type in Dean Graciosi. Uh, we'll put we'll put the name up here on the screen so you guys can see it, and you can you can obviously we'll we'll uh, we'll put it in the show notes as well. And I want you to go and give him a five. I want you to hit the subscribe button on his podcast. Give him a five star review and rating based on the value that you got on this. The second thing and most important thing I want you to do is I want you to go and check out how you can get the real underdog. You can really understand, go into more depth of the underdog advantage and go to deansbook.com. Again, we'll put the link around here so it's very obvious. Go to deansbook.com, grab yourself a copy and then buy a second copy to give to a friend, someone who you appreciate, someone who you love. By giving someone a resource to someone else, you become that person of value to them. Last thing I want you to do, is on the confirmation page, once you have bought the book, take a screenshot and send that to me on Facebook. Send that to me on Facebook, my personal address, I will get that, and I'm gonna put you all into a drawing, and I'm gonna pull three of you guys out, uh, probably on Friday, uh, and what we'll do is, I will do a 15 minute coaching call with each of you three, to thank you for investing in yourself because it takes time and money to make time and money, and I just believe Dean is one of the good guys, one of the guys, Truly here to help you grow. And they'll build a statue of him and Tony, maybe holding hands with like, you know, I can see an <laughs> old statue out there, the amount of people you've seen around the world. So Dean, I'm super grateful for your time. I know it's limited uh, and I just really appreciate the value that you've brought to me. I know it will change a lot of lives like it did with mine with that, with that, just that one video that I did in that structure that you shared. So yeah, Fraser, I want to tell you, you're a real class act, man. I'm glad we had the chance to meet today, but you're a real class act and I see how much you care and I'm glad we took the time to do this today. Thank you for the great plug and everybody out there, Listen, it's the little things that are the big, I shouldn't even say this, I have a dear friend, and I'll leave you with this. A dear friend said to me, the little things aren't the big things, the little things are everything. And if you think about some of the stuff we shared today, you might go, oh, I heard that before, but are you implementing it? Remember the difference, you've heard how to get in shape, but if you're not in the best shape of your life, just because you know, knowing about the gym and eating right doesn't put you in the best shape. Knowing how to do video, videos better and not taking uncomfortable, imperfect action doesn't get you the results you want, right? So stay watching a podcast, listening to a podcast like Fraser, but don't just listen. Don't be addicted to learning. Be addicted to learning and then implementing, even if it feels uncomfortable. And lastly, remember, the world's in a crazy place right now and it needs role models and leaders more than ever. So this, if, we're, if there's ever a time in history, if you love humanity and love to help humanity, this is your time to shine. This is a time to turn your light up. This is a time to make an impact and uh, love having you here. Frazier, thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, guys. And I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.